going around being messy, you're supposed to represent Jesus in whatever fashion he would have you represent him. Amen? So I'm going to make sure we all on the same page and that we all get a good understanding of what God would have us to do. Amen. So this is going to be lesson number two <clears throat> on weak and strong Christians. Amen. Weak and strong Christians. We'll be going over some things we said on lesson number one to bring you up to where we are on lesson number two. We may finish today, we may not. But this is what we're talking about today. Weak and strong Christian. So we're going to reiterate some things we said on lesson number one before we get to lesson number two. Amen? Amen. We taught on lesson number one on last week concerning weak and strong Christians. And it's not a sin to be weak. It's not a sin to be weak. But we said on lesson number one that it could be a sin to be fearful. Being weak means you just don't have the ability. But when you feel for that means you just afraid. That don't, when you feel for that don't mean you don't have the ability. You just may be afraid of what's going to happen if you do it. So when you feel for, you're afraid of what might happen if you do it. But when you weak, mean you just have you don't have the ability to do it. When I, if I'm weak, I just don't have the strength to do it. But when I'm filled with that, don't mean I don't have the strength to do it. I may have the strength to do it, but I may feel the outcome if I do it. So I ain't gonna do it. So I'm scared. Although the power might be in me to do it. But when you weak, even if you want to do it, you can't do it. So weak is better than being filled. Because when you feel for that mean you being a coward. And we taught you in lesson number one that the righteous are what? Bold. As a what? Lion. When a lion get hungry, he don't care how big the enemy is. He gonna try to take it down because he got to eat. When you, if you call yourself a lion and you got to selectively pick what you gonna eat and you starving, you ain't the king of the jungle. All you chase is cottontails. Because you know they can't put up no fight. See what I'm saying? So are you really king of the jungle? And all you do is peek out on the easy stuff. You want to do the private company dinner. But you ain't going to speak out against nothing that you see. And the spirit is there telling you to say something. We ain't talking about being messy. We talking about the spirit come upon you and say, you need to address this. And you say, I ain't, I ain't, they ain't called me over here for all that. God, you take God everywhere you go. If you don't want to address it, then don't go to everything they invite you to. Because you can't tell God when to keep his mouth shut. If you're a servant of the most high. Then if you don't think you can do what God asks you to do, you better just turn down some invitations. You know, we sing that song, Father, I'll go where he sent me. But when you get there, what you going to do? You're going to be weak or you're going to be strong? Because the Spirit going to come upon you every now and then to say something. Because God wants them to live with too. He's not doing to condemn them. They already condemned. He want to bring them out of the darkness into the light and you're the Messiah. All right. You got to be strong to get on that cross and stay on that cross and got the power to come off that cross. You got to be strong. The power that a believer possesses is from the Lord. Remember that. God backing you up. The power that a believer possesses is from the Lord. Although we get our power from the Holy Ghost, we must allow him to operate in his full potential. You know, the Holy Spirit is living in us. We must allow him to operate at his full potential. It's called don't quench the spirit. You know how you quench the spirit? You may be at a place that's not comfortable or the atmosphere is not Christian. It's not a Christian atmosphere. 
but yet you there, you are a Christian. And the Lord tell you to do something or speak out on something, and before you speak out or do what God asks you to do, you take a survey of who all there first. You're going to get in trouble. Because you already done surveyed. He asked you to take no survey. He told you to speak. And when you start taking that survey, you know what you're doing? You're quenching the spirit. Because instead of doing while the spirit is upon you, you're trying to reason with yourself and you ain't going to do it. You, you, you're not going to do it because you don't took a survey. Look to your neighbor and say, no surveys. No the power that you possess is from God and he's going to back you up. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Then you shall be witnesses of me in Judea and all Samaria. You don't have to turn that, but we discussed that on take number one. That's number one, Acts 1 8. Christians are commanded to be what? Strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You are commanded to be strong and not weak. Ephesians 6 10 says, Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And how do you be strong in God? You just trust in God. That's all. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. The word of God teaches us that the righteous are bold as a lion, but the wicked flee when no man pursue it. Wicked people run, ain't nobody chasing. Always jittery, jabbering, nervous, talking to themselves. Losing their mind. Why? Because they're wicked. Their mind is the playground for Satan. Under medical terminology, we call it depression. Under medical terminology, we call it depression. But in the spirit world, we call it demon. Don't say that real. <laughs> depression. Well, at least they got it right to start with a D. But it's a demon. Where you think sickness and diseases come from? The devil. Mm -hmm. The righteous are bold as a lion. Uh -huh. Being fearful is not of God. We talked to that on this number. That's not from God when you're afraid. Because Jesus was bold. And we should be bold. Jesus said the works he do, we should do what? Also. Being fearful could be considered a sin. Revelation says that the Fearful will not inherit the kingdom of God, nor the murders or the doubters or the whoremongers. So we know that it's a sin. It could be a sin, according to Revelation. If you feel fear, you're going to go to the lake of fire. The fearful will not inherit the kingdom of God. We discussed that on left number one. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. That's 2 Timothy 1 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. If God has not given us a spirit of fear, where did that spirit of fear come from? Who do you think it's from? Satan. You know Satan's greatest weapon is what if? That's what he speaks to us. What if? What ifs? What ifs? What if? What if? Well, what if it don't? You ever thought about that? He's operating on your flesh. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Fear is from Satan. Faith is from God. God has dwelt to every man a measure of faith. Now, when we look to the name, say we're on lesson number two now. Okay, listen at this. This is what the Spirit showed me as I walk with God. We Christians, just to think, these are some signs and symptoms of a weak Christian. Okay. Amen. Amen. These are some signs and symptoms of a weak Christian. We Christians compromise everything. They compromise. Mm -hmm. They ain't going to resist, they're going to give in. Compromise. Mm -hmm. Always looking for a peaceful end. Well, I just don't want to cause no trouble. Uh, when they killed Jesus, they started some trouble. 
trouble already began. You too late. Hmm. Always looking for a peaceful end or way out of situations. Wants to be accepted and liked by everyone. Wants to be accepted and liked by everyone. Amen. You can't be accepted and liked by everyone. We'll quench the spirit. <laughs> the spirit say go, you say no. <laughs> we'll quench the spirit. Watch this. We'll close their eyes and stop their ears. And act like they don't see nothing here, nothing. But the most fearful one of all is they will get in trouble with God. Amen. You're going to get in trouble with God. That's right. We Christians, those are some symptoms of a weak Christian. Make sure you're not doing that. Don't compromise. Compromise, compromise if it's necessary. For example, I love to pray. I love to preach. But they say no preaching on the job, so I compromise. I need to eat. <laughs> I got a compromise. And I signed the policies. And I signed the waivers and all that saying I got a company policy. You know, I got this in my folder. They don't want you doing that on the public. They don't want us even allowing people to come on the property to do it. So in that case, I got a compromise, but God know about that. Hmm? But now when I get off work and I'm at HEB around the corner, that's open game. <laughs> huh? Now you don't compromise at ATV parking lot now. Ain't nobody telling you you can't preach over there. Or if you get an opportunity to witness to somebody. You see what I'm saying? We got to obey the laws of the land. All right? Always looking for a peaceful end. Don't want to cause no confusion. You're going to cause some confusion anyway. Even if you compromise, you're going to cause some confusion. Because you can't please people. People are hard to please. They're hard to please. Mm -hmm. Always looking for a way out. Wants to be accepted and liked by everyone. That's a dangerous person because they'll stab you in the back in a minute. That's right. mm -hmm. Person that wants to be accepted by anyone will do anything to get that acceptance. That's right. mm -hmm. And will quench that spirit. Sometimes God don't want you to say nothing. Sometimes God just wants you to leave. Mm -hmm. And we'll sit down. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I heard two women talk at one time. One lady was telling the girl, other lady, he ain't my type. <laughs> he ain't my type. I like a miss, I like a man. But he kept on coming. And he kept on coming. And she kept on saying, ain't my type, ain't my type. He this, he that, he that. The next day, you know, they was engaged. What happened? You compromised. She compromised. Not saying they're not getting along, not saying it's not worth, but you know what I'm saying? If you got a standard as a Christian, you ought to hold your standard. And you shouldn't change your standard and be like every weight and every little feather, like a feather in the wind that moves whichever the wind blows. Then you got some that will close their eyes and stop their ears because they say, I don't want to be a part of it. You are a part of it. Because you're a child of God. But them kind of people going to get in trouble with God. Now watch this. This to show look to them and say, he's going to show you he ain't making this up. What makes one weak and what makes one strong is this. Because everyone does not have the same level of faith or trust in God. Simply that. Everyone does not have the same level of trust or faith in God. Let's look at Romans chapter 14. We're on lesson number two. And then we're going to talk about for a few minutes Peter and John. Y'all know Peter, Apostle Peter, huh? The one that denied Jesus and said three times he didn't know who Jesus was. But Jesus told you to come walk on the water. And you walked on the water. But when you got in trouble and you thought they were going to crucify you like they was getting ready to crucify your Savior, you said you didn't know the man. Three times you denied. Romans chapter 14, verse 1. When you finally say, bless his name. Bless his name. I want to show you with the scriptures who is weak and who is strong. But neither one is greater than the other because God received both of them. It's not a sin to be weak, but it may be a sin to be afraid. 
Because when you're afraid don't mean you're weak. It means you just feel the outcome. But when you're weak, it means you don't have the ability to perform something or believe something. Romans 14, verse 1, it says, Him that is weak in faith, you see that? Receive ye, but not to doubtful disputation. For one believe it, it's all about belief. Look, one believe it that he may eat all things. You know, like some people today, I don't eat the pork. I don't eat pork. Pork ain't no good. Okay, that's well, if that's fine. what you believe, that's fine. That's fine. But if you got any yeah. pork chops, bring them to my house. <laughs> nah, okay. I'll have a, uh, I'll anoint them with some hot sauce. <laughs> 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 them. <laughs> and some brown rice. <laughs> <laughs> but look, look, we laughing, but look, this is true. People, some believe they can't eat. He's yeah. using this to teach us. Look at verse 1 again. Him that is weak in faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputation. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak, eat just herbs. There's some people that's vegetarians. Yes, veggies. See? Yeah, vegans. Yeah. You see? Now watch this. Let not him that eat it despise him that eat it not. Yes. The one that eat the meat, don't judge the one that won't eat the meat. That's right. And let not him which eat it not Judge him with eat. And the one that don't eat the meat, don't judge the one that eat the meat. The one that just eat vegetables, don't judge one another. For God received him both. He received both of them. So it's all about what you believe. It's all right to believe one thing, but don't teach the word wrong. We ain't talking about teaching the word wrong. But look at verse 4. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master stand he a fall. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. So he's saying, one is weak in faith. You got people today right now because God had gave the law back in the days of Moses and told the Israelites not to eat pork because pork was considered an unclean meat and that was part of the law. But that law was only for the Israelites. It wasn't for the Gentiles. We hadn't been drafted in by then because Moses had just given the law. But when Jesus Christ came and became our high priest, you can read Hebrews chapter 7 when you get home. It said with the high priesthood, with the priesthood being changed, there was also a necessity to change the law. Now the way we worship God and the things we eat is okay now because all, every creature of God is good yes. and nothing to be refused for the sanctified by the word of God and prayer. As long as you bless that food, it's all right. Amen. But if your conscience condemn you, don't eat it. Because right. whatever is not of faith is sin. To him it is a sin. So now, if I know one of my brothers and sisters in Christ believe that we shouldn't eat pork, then when I have barbecue pork chops, I won't invite him. Because I'm going to eat the pork, but I ain't going to eat in front of my brother or sister the strong. I'm going to have to cook the pork before we get there and put the chicken on the table. But you read right there, everything is good. It's all about what you believe. Now, back in those days, under the law of Moses, they could not eat the pork. But Jesus came. We're not under the law of Moses. We're under grace. He came to fulfill the law. Now, Jesus said, every creature is good. Because y'all wasn't eating the pork, but you wasn't obeying God either. <laughs> Which one more important? I don't eat pork, but I don't do what God said either. You a religious freak, that's all. Got a lot of people like that. They don't gamble, but they'll cuss you out. Oh, Jesus. Huh? Sure. Yes. Huh? Oh, yeah. Huh? They don't commit adultery, but they'll kill you. Sure. <laughs> you piss them off. Oh, yes. Yes. So we all got something, what I'm saying. But can we obey God? That's what's most important. Yeah. Hmm? I don't think I'm going to finish. Because I got some good stuff to give you. Ooh, I got some good stuff. I'm going to give you a little taste of it. We gonna give, we, I'm, a, I'm a person of time. I'm going to be timely. You can't be no good example and you're not timely. Always late. Always. No, uh -uh, I'm timely. Yes. We ain't going nowhere. We're going to serve God till we die. Amen. I'm going to lose two examples of some people in the Bible who display weakness the one who displayed strength. Mm -hmm. Apostle Peter, 
He loved Jesus. Jesus called him the rock. When Jesus was walking on the sea, Peter said, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. And Peter walked on the water. But when the high priest and the Pharisees and the, and the Jews caught Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and led him to Kapai's house at night to be tried by a crooked judge and jury, Peter followed from a distance. And he saw everything they were doing to Jesus. And while he was around there observing the, 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 the crooked trial, some people spotted him and said, hey, you one of his disciples. Mm -hmm. Now this is the man that walked on the water, mm -hmm. fed the multitudes, mm -hmm. was there when they raised Jairus' daughter, mm -hmm. was on the mountain with Jesus when Elijah and Moses appeared on the mountain of transfiguration. Peter was there. Mm -hmm. And yet when the lady, the lady said, you are one of Jesus' disciples, and, Peter, and Jesus told Peter that before the cock crowed three times, he was going to deny me. Peter said, I go to prison. I go to prison with you, Lord. Not me. Mm -hmm. Nothing but death can separate me from you. Mm -hmm. And when that little girl said, you was with Jesus, he said, not me. Not me. Mm -hmm. And another one said, surely you was with me. He said, I don't know the man. Mm -hmm. You know why? He was weak. He displayed weakness because he was operating on fear. He was afraid if he said he was with Jesus that they were going to throw him in that trial and say we got two for one. Because he followed Jesus. When they took Jesus to trial at night at Capaz's house, castle, he was there watching from a distance. And they recognized him in the crowd. And he said, no, not me. Because I've already seen y'all spat on this man and blindfold him and slap him. Y'all ain't finna do that to me. He denied him three times, and the Bible said Jesus looked over at him. Yes. And he began to cry and weep bitterly, and he ran off. Mm -hmm. But John the Baptist, let's look at strength. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get the scriptures next week. I'm finna close. John the Baptist saw Herod sitting on the throne dating his brother's wife. That's right. And John said, "It's not lawful for you to have that woman." the birthday party in front of all his guests. John said, you shouldn't have that woman. That's your brother's wife. Mm -hmm. And John the Baptist was mad. But his brother's wife, who was dating, was even madder. Oh, she was smoking mad. And see, John, he was a bold man. How the wicked be bold? But the righteous be scary. He ain't hiding this woman. He doing this at the party. He got on his side at the banquet. His brother's wife. He not hiding. Then his 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 niece start dancing. The hoochie mama dance. He starts saying, "Wait a minute." He start looking at her. And he said. Anything you want, you got it going on so tough. Anything you want, tell me and I do it. Mm -hmm. And her mama told her. Right. Yes. Tell him you want to cut John the Baptist's head off and put it on a pad right. and bring it to me. That's right. Amen. Amen. And she said, I want John the Baptist's head cut off and brought to me on a platter. And Herod regretted he said what he said. Because a king's word was law. But John didn't care. They threw him in the prison. You ain't you ain't gonna read no text. He was crying, saying, Go tell my cousin Jesus, come get me out of jail. Oh, no. If God be for me, who can be against me? Yeah. You want my head on a platter? So be it. He was strong in the law. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And he fronted this man. This was the king. This ain't no, you know, you wasn't. That <laughs> the king was like Obama. You had to have, you had to get invited to be to this place. What they had to profit there for, I don't know. Maybe they want him to bless the food, you know. Real, you come over. Well, hold up, I see something. I miss that cranberry sauce, but hold on, brother. Ain't that your niece over there you kissing on? What we gonna know we're gonna do? Man, that ain't my business. I just come over there, they told me bless the food. Yo, head pick preacher. Not John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. 
Look to neighbor. So we're gonna talk about that next. We're gonna look at that next week. We can't <laughs> get a lot of hand clap of praise. Any question? Any comment? 